I guess I can turn my camera on and then you're just staring at me, but I'm mostly going to be sharing my screen anyway. So, all right, yeah, folks, turn it over to you. let's uh, share a screen, go over what I'm going to do. So this is my CV as everything I do. It's on GitHub and it's public and it's generated from code. So um, I'm going to walk through how I do this and I don't know if I have a good justification as to why I do this. I just kind of think it's fun. Um, I, I have a couple. And I, I so I'll talk maybe high level about like those ideas, like why do I do this? Um, but more importantly, I just thought it was like a fun project to play with some tools like Quarto and, and see what else I could do. I'm a big fan of rendering databases to text, like generating documents out of a database uh, whenever I can. So like my quizzes in my class. Um, I have a quiz question. I have it right here for my class right after this. I'll have a bank of questions. And so that's data. And I need to random, uh, generate you know, 50 different quizzes. So no one quiz is the same. It just randomly grabs a question, generates a PDF, and then I print that off. And I have a you know, unique quiz for each person. So things like that can be done if you have a database. Um, so CVs are another example. So I'm going to show you my CV Google Doc. This is my database of everything on my CV. If you're an academic, the most important thing probably there is your publications. Um, so I just keep track of every paper I write and I keep track of the pieces that make up a citation. I don't have like the full citation. I just have the pieces. So, you know, when was it? I have different categories of things I write, peer reviewed articles, conference papers, magazines, book chapters, opinion pieces, whatever they are. Um, these are just some flags from my website. You don't need those. The date it was published, um, this is actually on Google Scholar. There's a URL, unique URL for every paper. So that's the Scholar year, authors, titles, journals, DOI, all that stuff. Um, so the reason I did this is because, I mean, in, in general, anywhere you're working, you should probably keep track of the things you're doing that you're going to stick on your resume or CV. If you're in academia, it's particularly important because you got to keep track of like everything. Presentations just go on forever. I mean, I've been, I don't know how many, 78 conference <laughs> presentations. It's just a huge thing. And I keep, I was always doing this anyway, because every year we have to submit like an annual review. And it's really annoying if you have to go to like your actual physical CV, which might be like a Word doc and like copy, paste, or like you forgot what papers you published last year. So you have to go to Google Scholar and Google yourself to see like, so just manage that in a database. That's a that's just a good idea in general. So you could just stop right here and we've learned something. Like keep track of your information. Um, I, you know, mine goes a little further. This is public, by the way. And we can go to this URL and see it, which doesn't really matter because it's a CV. It's something that I'm going to make public anyway. Grants that I've, you know, applied to, uh, you know, awards I've gotten, scholarships, teaching courses I've taught. Um, I have all of these things as different tabs. So I'm going to kind of focus on publications because it's the one that, um, you, you'll see you probably like earliest on, on your CV. Um, so my, my thinking was like, well, I'm already doing this. Like I've already been keeping track of things that I'm doing over time. Why should I then go hand make a CV? Like, why should I copy paste every one of these rows into like a word doc? That just seems silly. Why not use code to dynamically generate it? So one place I was, I was generating it was on my, my research page of my website, like everything on this page all of these, you know, every every paper that I have written and the links to them, all of these things are all generated from this database. It, I, I have some code that basically says, go to this Google sheet, grab that page, and ev for every item in that, you know, that every row in that pubs file, generate this citation from it. All I'm doing is just pasting together columns. So it's it's not really complicated to do this. So I made this kind of thing for my website. And I said, oh, that's kind of nice. Um, that's not too hard to do. Um, and, uh, but then, you know, turning it into a PDF, like a, that, that was trickier. And I was like, how am I going to do this though? Cause I, again, I don't want to have to manually make anything. I want to work from the same database. So that's when I brought over Quarto and that's the main thing I'm going to talk about. So this is the, the, you know, repo, if you want to play with it, uh, I've already downloaded it, um, here. So I've got it open. And I'm going to open up my R, R studio here to show you that I'm doing this in R, but Quarto is actually, um, just in case you haven't seen it, I, I did a little talk on this last fall too, like rendering documents to, to PDFs in, in Quarto. Quarto is a publishing platform 
that is open source and it's called Corto because it supports four languages, Python, R, Julia, and Observable. Um, it's just beautiful. Uh, it's somewhat of an alternative to Jupyter where you can have text and code chunks in the same file and then you render it and it renders to like a lot of different outputs, you know, PDFs or um, web pages, whatever you want. In fact, my whole website is basically all generated from Corto. Um, so that was my thinking was, you know, I can, I can take this thing and, and render it to a, a PDF and they have, you know, a whole reference page on how do you do this? And under the hood, it's what it's actually doing is you, you write some markdown, it, it turns that into LaTeX and then it uses LaTeX to render it to a PDF. So that's the stuff happening under the hood. But what you see is you just write markdown. So a lot of the stuff on my CV, let me, let me actually just open up the CV so you can kind of see the target. Like this is what we're going for. This is the final rendered version. looks pretty nice, right? Like all done, you know, by, by the system. Some of this stuff isn't going to change much like my name and hopefully my institution. <laughs> we'll see, see how that goes in a few years. Um, you know, but you know, your education, not not getting new degrees very frequently. So that's stuff I hard coded. You know, I just wrote, and some of this is actually just straight up LaTeX, which is another one of the nice things about um, working in Corto. If you're if you're going to render this to a PDF, I, I'm not going to go over Corto in, in, in a lot of detail. I'm just going to say that any any QMD file, which is a Corto file, you have to have some sort of header that tells you about the settings, like how do you want to render it. So I'm saying render to a PDF, and here's all some of the things like you know, make it a 10 point font and some of these other things. And um, this is about controlling how code chunks are going to execute. Um, then I have just plain LaTeX. That is that header. Um, I could not find a really good way to do this with plain Markdown. So I just use LaTeX and this was a great, just chat GPT made for me. I was like, just, I need a center centered thing that has my name and this information. And it was like, here's some LaTeX for that. It just worked just absolutely beautiful. Um, minor things I added with some spacing here to, you know, get a little more tight and compact like that. Just beautiful. Um, academic appointments, again, log table. This was, this was all me saying, I don't, I don't, I don't know much about LaTeX. I, I don't work with it much. ChatGPT just, again, solved this problem for me. Education and training, research interests. So hard-coded things, but you can already start seeing some of this is now just markdown. Like that's just means make that bold so that when it renders, it's bold. Um, so actually only this and the header, all those three things are all pure LaTeX. From here on, it's just markdown. This is just a bulleted list. Um, so now we can get into like the fun stuff, like the publication. So this is what it looks like in, in my, um, I, I changed a little bit of the spacing. I, I, I think I'm adding a little bit of spacing between a bullet list. Again, no idea how to do that. I just asked ChatGPT how to do it and it did. Um, here we go. Now we're getting into code. Refereed articles and there's just blah, like all this stuff. What is going on? Um, so we have to, uh, we have to open up a functions file. This is where things get, I mean, it's not a lot of code, 70 lines of code. This is where I started writing a few, um, hand coded things to, to make life a little easier. So this CV sheet function takes this, um, read sheet function, which is from some package. I don't know which one. Um, it's one of these packages, uh, probably this one. I think it's Google sheets Four. And I've, I've hard coded the URL to that CV. So now you give it a sheet name and you'll get back that sheet as a data frame, right? And, and most of these are little tiny things like that, like make an ordered list, you give it a list and it's gonna format it with, with markdown formatting. So, so that when you render it, you get a bullet list. Um, so some really basic things there. Um, so I source that functions file right when I start and I'm gonna just show you what, like, what, what it looks like. Um, if I use these, these little, these little pieces, um, so like get CV sheets pubs, that's going to grab this pubs tab. So if I run that little bit of code, I, I get this thing and I can look at it. It's called pubs. There it is. That's, that's the Google sheet. So now I have that file locally. I can do whatever I want with it. And all of this code is doing is just assembling a citation, right? You can see it being pasted together. Like if the journal, if it, if there was a missing thing for the journal, just fill it with an empty space. If there's a number that's not there, use a, fill it with an empty space, construct the DOI URL, which is actually just constructing a markdown like bracket with a parentheses to make the, the link like an actual live link. Um, it generates all of that stuff. So I'm going to run that and you'll see what pubs 
looks like. It's a smaller little data frame of just, um, uh, oh, actually, no, this this is still the, the full data frame that has all the things. And then I'm I'm making an ordered list of just the peer-reviewed ones. And so now I, I use that function over and over, like make an ordered list of peer-reviewed. Then the things that are conference papers, do it again, but show me the conference papers. So when you, when you, when you run that, you get this. You see how it, it renders as like a numbered list? And this maybe looks like a mess, but each one of these is going to generate... This is this has got markdown code in it, right? So this link is is a, a link to a DOI, um, and it's going to if you took that content and you pasted it in, when you click render, it's going to render this whole thing, and, and it's doing this all in real time. It's going to run all that code. It's going to generate all of these ordered lists here, and each of those lists is going to populate with the pieces of my of my CV. So those fourteen that list of fourteen papers, there they are. And you can see these these are these are live now. Like this is um, this is a live link. Open in Brave, and there's a link to the paper. So you can kind of do some nice things with your CV. You can if your most people see a CV as a PDF nowadays. They, no one's printing out a thirty page CV. You're posting it on your website. It's you know it's nice to have that kind of link and things. So if someone's looking at your CV and they're like, oh, that paper is actually really interesting. Tell me about it. And you can just go to it actually from your PDF. Um, so there's, I think you're getting a lot of utility out of this. I also put in a few other things like that are kind of related to publications. Like if you want to see my Google scholar profile, there you go. There I am. If you want to see my orchid, uh, is that how people pronounce it or orc ID? Um, there I am. Um, so you can validate that I'm not just making this up. These are real papers. Um, Hey, come on in, grab some food. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that. That's the gist of it, right? So you like in, I don't know, 10 minutes, you've got the idea, hopefully. There's there's a lot of code and pieces moving around here, <clears throat> but fundamentally it's create a data file that stores all the information you need. That's the hardest part. You know, once you once you have that, the only thing you have to do from now on is update this. That's that's the real reason I, I want to do it because I update this anyway. Every time I publish something, I'm going to add another row and another paper. Every conference I go to, I'm going to just add a row and put it in here. And at the end of the year, when I have to do some annual review, I just look for that, I just filter for 2023. And then there you go, I can drop it in. Um, and then I never have to change my website or my CV. They are automatically rendering in the background. They just, they render every week. So if anything changes in here, my CV just gets updated and I don't even think about it. I haven't, like, I don't even look at the PDF. It just, I just trust that it's rendering correctly. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a whole nother thing I'll, I'll talk about in a minute. But um, but that that was kind of the motivation for it. And I think if you're in academia, maybe this is worthwhile. If you're an incredibly prolific person who's publishing constantly, you know, I'm publishing like two, three to four maybe papers a year. So I, maybe I could have just manually done this and saved myself some time. But um, but it is nice that it it like all each of these things is just taking from that that database and dropping it in here. Um, Conference papers in particular are really tedious because there's just so many things. I mean, there's so many conferences we go to. All of that looks the same in here up until maybe the teaching part where you'll just see that each of these are just saying, make an ordered list, make an ordered list. And I, I set it up this way so that that little ordered list function, you give it a, you give it the data frame and you, you tell it what, what bullet you, um, what style you want. Do you want it to be numbered or, or bulleted? And that's it. Um, there's a few other things like my grants. I wanted to make a little more specific because I, I broke out, uh, let's say, where is grants? Uh, external grants. I broke it out by, you know, whether, whether I was a PI or whether I was a co-PI, things like that, whether it was an internal external grant. But you'll see that there's not like a lot of code. Like the vast majority of the code is just pasting things together. And that's what took a little bit of time. Um, but that's that's the idea. Okay, so I've got I've got this database. I use it on my website. I use it to make a PDF. Which, by the way, another thing that's really nice. If you render this and you and you update it on GitHub, so this is the actual you know the CV. Every time I change something, I can I can push it to here, and and there's my updated PDF. GitHub actually previews the doc for you. So when someone says send me your CV, I just send them this link. I actually don't even. I don't have to worry about hosting it or anything. I I mean, when you click on like 
CV from my website. It just goes to my GitHub repo and it's like, there's my, there's my CV. I, I'm just lazy. I don't have, I don't have to do any work to make it um, viewable from the web. So as long as I point someone to this, I know that's the most recent version. I don't have to think about it. I think maybe where this may not be as helpful is if you're applying to jobs and you want to customize it for every single job. I mean, maybe it could be helpful because some of that content doesn't change and you just want to change like you want to highlight different pieces. And so maybe you could go in here and edit which pieces you're showing or in what order that you're preparing it. But but CVs in general are just something that's just cumulative, just constantly being updated. So so this is this is useful. Um, but you could put a marker in your database to say, yeah. like, this is private industry related, yeah. this is government related, and then if right. you wanted a government CV, you just go. You just sort it by those instead of yeah. cutting and pasting everything. So the nice thing about if you adopt this idea uh, is like you can make, you can structure your database however you want. I mean, for me, you can see that I have Markdown in the database itself because like whenever I have my name, I want it to show up bold. Um, so that if I'm on a multi-author paper, you can see, you know, author orders and stuff like here, I'm over here, here, I'm in the first, whatever. I, I just put it, I made it that way. And yeah, you can have, I have all these other flags that are sort of for my website. Like, do I want this to be featured? Do I want it to be, all that does is just say, put those at the top of my page. So when my website renders, these featured articles show up first. I just think they're like the the latest thing I'm working on sort of. Um, so so you can, you can structure your database however you want and use it to generate anything. A CV that's a PDF, maybe some pieces on a website. Um, I'll mention briefly here, you know, how I automate this is through a GitHub action, um, which we we'll probably need to do like a whole day on this. I, it's been on the list for a while, like talk about actions for a while, but um, actions aren't that complicated, especially now when you have ChatGPT, it's it's really become much, much easier. Um, I'll say they're a little bit strange to set up, but the, the idea is um, if you haven't seen them, you're not sure what they are, is you generate this little workflow YAML. YML file. And it is a bit annoying, like where it lives. Like it took me a while to understand that it's a hidden folder. Like, so it's in a dot GitHub folder, which on a Mac, I think you have to have command shift period. Yeah. to like view the hidden things. Um, so in there, there's a workflows folder uh, and then a render dot YAML. And so this is the thing that's basically just a set of instructions that says every time I do something or however I want to set it up, um, I want GitHub to run these sequence of commands. So now you're, you're, these are like sort of command line things, but I have it set up on two, two commands on push. So anytime I push something to this repo, it re-renders the whole thing. It, it runs this or on a cron job. So this runs every midnight on Sunday. So if I'm extremely prolific and I publish three papers in one week, I'm covered. I figured once a week was like a little more than enough. I, I mean, I could probably do this once six months and nothing would change. But um, not much would change. Um, so so this is this is rendering um, once a week usually, and if I want to manually edit anything, but I rarely manually change anything now. But what this is really doing is there's a few tools you need. You need Quarto, you need R, um, and so that's just saying okay, use these tools. All right, these are these are things that exist in the ethers of GitHub. Uh, and then you're going to run some some commands. So run, install your packages. I need some R packages. These are packages that are part of my, um, if you go over to my project, uh, where is it here? I need I need all of these, these packages. These are things I'm, I'm using. Um, oops, where's my workflow? And it, it runs those. It installs text. This is actually like that annoying. You have to actually install LaTeX. But I, I'm installing a version called TinyText because it's way smaller. It's just the bare minimums you need to render it doesn't, you don't need the like multi gigabyte LaTeX. Um, I do need a few LaTeX packages uh, and then it renders it. So it just calls a Quarto command. It says, go to this QMD file and render it to PDF. Um, and then it like, actually that's like some, some of the um, tags it's gonna say, it, it's coming from me with my email and it commits it to the, to the branch, that's it. I did not know any of this. I mean, like every time I work with GitHub Actions, it is just total witchcraft to me. I, I don't work with command line ever. I asked ChatGPT what to do. I was like, I need a GitHub Action that renders every Sunday on every push. It's going to, and I, I gave it 
this file. I said, uh, I want you to render <laughs> this Corto doc that has like these packages and, and like, I need these R packages, I need these LaTeX packages, go. And it, it took me maybe five or six iterations of getting some errors and then correcting the errors. And, and, and when I got an error, I just said, okay, I'm getting this error, what's wrong with it? And it updated it. So I, I eventually got to a working action here that kind of works. And they live here and you can see your action. Every time I, you know, I pushed something, uh, I was trying to scrape citations on my papers. And then I found out that was just probably not worth it. I was trying that two weeks ago. Um, um, and so, so this is when I was trying to install things. You can see all the little like, oh, that didn't work. <laughs> trying to install lab curl didn't work. And eventually I, I got it working and that, that's mostly running on its own. Um, so we'll, we'll probably do one on actions, but I use actions for all kinds of things. My website, um, any of the course websites I run, those are all dynamically, you know, rendered daily so that if I change anything, it's just up to date. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I just changed my, my Google sheet and I have magically updated CVs. That's, that's the whole workflow. Now you, you can totally do this in other platforms. I mean, Hey, um, you can do this with Google Apps Script, which is, I, I'm sure this is like entirely doable. If you want to stay in the Google world, you could probably have a Google doc that has some of this content in it. And you can put in commands to say, grab this content from that Google sheet and so on. And like, I'm sure there's a way to do that. Corto is just a tool that I know pretty well. And, and again, like if you don't know R, but you know, Python, the only difference would be Python. That's it. You just change the language. Just say, write, use Python code, and then you can write whatever code you want. You can have your own Python functions over here, whatever you want to make. Um, so Corto is kind of flexible in that way and, and, and kind of nice that it's like a sandbox. You can kind of make whatever you want. Um, so Corto um, is like um, overly? Um, it's different. I don't know when you came in, you might not have seen me show the website. Corto is a, it's a, I, I describe it as a publishing, yeah, it is, yeah, technical publishing system. It's a, it's an open source system for integrating Markdown and code into all sorts of different outputs. If you want to make a website or a PDF, like we're doing, you can combine, like this is an example where you have these code chunks or it's going to run some code, um, but it's also going to have some text. And so when you say render, it's going to render that all into a nice looking web page or some sort of output. So it's a publishing system more than anything. And the ability to run code in real time as something is rendering is kind of what makes it nice. You can do the exact same thing with Jupyter. In fact, you can run Jupyter inside Quarto. I mean, these things are just sort of overlapping each other now. But um, Quarto, I think the biggest difference is Jupyter is running sort of like in a web browser and you have to have a kernel in the background running Python or some language. Corto is not doing that. It's going to uh, run on whatever language is on your computer. So it's it doesn't it's not like in a browser. It's just plain text. So this file, this QMD file, is a plain text file that um, in here you can open it up and see it. It's it's just text. And so whenever it sees these chunks denote, denoted by that, it's going to say, "Ah, oh, this is our code. Run this code." And then whatever whatever you get out of that, insert that in here. Um, so that's just going to render to like an ordered list of a, a bunch of number, a numbered list. And it's going to just replace that code with that numbered list and you, and you get an output. If you look on YouTube too, you did a longer one on Corto. Yeah, last fall. Well, yeah, was it last it was spring? in the fall. Yeah. Well, probably, I mean, we record all of these. So if yeah. you look back this one. In that one, I... Into more detail on Corto, so. I'm, I'm also rendering to PDFs, but I'm in that one, I was showing how you can do this type of thing where like, you're not just making one document, you're making like lots of documents. So like I'm making exams for my students and I wanna have the student name on the bottom. So that's a piece of data now. And I just have a little data frame that says, here's my roster. And then print, like just make a PDF, just go write a loop, just write a for loop and say, for each person in this thing, render a, a document so that it gets like customized for each person. Um, this one, I'm just, this is just for me. I'm just rendering it once. And anybody else who wants to read my CV for some weird reason. Um, so that's it. That's all I really have on it. I mean, I can answer questions on it, but that's, I said, yeah, I'm probably going to write a blog post on like a little more how to do it, but I'll also maybe put the link to my, um, the actual repo. If you want to try this or like you can work from this and modify it. Almost everything I've ever learned is 
by doing exactly that. Like I saw someone else's website and I was like, oh, that's nice. I'm going to copy that and modify it. And now I have a website too. But you I, could do something with Google Forms to feed to your... Like, yeah. So, and if you wonder, want to, didn't they say it's by tool? Because you're basically just using the sheet okay. as a database. Right. So you could have a form <laughs> feed to your database to update things. I mean, not for your resume, but... For anything like anything, this. For anything, if you want yeah. to collect information from people and have it in real time get applied to a website. Yeah. In a readable format that people could then yeah. print out, you I, could easily do that. I think um, using a Google Sheet as a database is like highly undervalued, but it's extremely useful, uh, um, especially if it can be public. If you can make it public, like this content this is pretty much public information anyway. You can go to my Google Scholar page and see what papers I've written. But it's just a, this is just a whole formatting exercise at the end of the day. But if you if you have stuff that you that can be made public, then yeah, you could have a form that when they fill it out, it, it updates a row in your in your Google Sheet, and then there's all this other stuff happening, like to render to a website, render a PDF, whatever you want. Um, there's a lot we of use yeah Google Sheet for our calendar. The yeah, calendar that you can subscribe to. It's a Google sheet for us. I type in what the dates and the topics and stuff are and click update calendar. You're just and it updates all the calendars, all the different dates and stuff. Yeah. My, my... So I think there's a there's kind of a nice workflow um of any context where you're having to do something like this, where you need to you have something that's changing over time and you want the output to just automatically update. Um there's a lot, these are all free tools and except for Google open source, though, if you're just using it as a spreadsheet, it's pretty much fine. Um, and you can make it public if you, this is, this is publicly accessible, not publicly editable, but anybody can see it. Um, so any other, someone's got questions online, maybe? Yes. Sorry. I have a question because um, I thought that the session started at 12. So oh, no. <laughs> uh, I'm wrapping I, up now. <laughs> oh, you're finishing. Oh, I thought well, I just got through most of the content, but okay. 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 So basically, um, um yeah, so yeah. you're using the Google sheet as a, as a database, right. and then you're making the website on Quarto using the Google sheet as database. Is that, is that, am I correct? Yeah. The high level, maybe this is a good part for a so did you record this session as we well? We recorded it too. So okay, you, great. Okay, yeah, I'll, great. I'll post it and you can watch the, the yeah. early part. I'll watch the, it. The yeah. general idea is store your data in a Google Sheet, make it accessible, and then use Cordo to grab the elements out of that sheet that you want and publish it however you want. I use that to update my website, like here, all of these Okay. Citations are, are just generated by pasting together these columns uh -huh. uh, in, in a in a a different Quarto file that renders to a website. Okay. And then we have another Quarto file that renders to a PDF, like this one, where it's doing the same thing. And, and you can see these things are being pasted together here. And then they render to this. So, so wait, so so you did the entire website for yes. citation? Like, what about like for other things? Oh, no, the, the website? rest of, like this website, the code for this website is a whole other repo that has a lot of other stuff. But I'm just saying this oh, page, research okay. page, this page, the content okay. on this page is, is yeah. automatically updated. But when I when I chain like I just update this and it okay you do you. and and how did you make the rest of the website? Not this one yet. Okay, this one's still distill, which is like the precursor to Quarto, but you could think of it essentially the same. Okay, uh, this one. Um, let's see, where is it on GitHub? This is now we're we're going off on somewhat different topic, but not not really. It's it's still very related. I think it's um I think it's like J Helvey distill. Yeah, this this looks promising. Uh, how do you trigger an update? What do you mean an update on the from the sheets? Does it auto read like every time someone visits? Or no, it's uh, every time I push something to a repo, it rebuilds. Or every week, I just have it on a cron job, so it just renders you weekly. Do that in sheets. Anytime you could do it. On sheets that it will update. That's cool. it can push. Yeah. yeah. So so if you really wanted to go a step further, you could anytime you modify something on this, you could have a little Google app script that runs in the back that says, "Okay, something changed here. Push it, like." Trigger that action on GitHub and, and it will re-render the whole thing. What's I don't huh? What's your website again? If you don't mind. Jhelvy.com is my main website. Um and then there I am. Uh, but 
this uh, CV one, it, like, so JHelvy is my, also my GitHub username. So there's, you know, the CV uh, repo is the one where I'm making this PDF. The JHelvy distill is my distill website, which is actually this current website. So all of the content on that website is here. And so you'll see there's a lot of different pages here, but the research page, um, you'll notice that this looks awfully familiar. It says make published, <laughs> uh, make a list peer reviewed, make a list of working papers, make a list of conference papers. That's the same thing that's going on in here where it says make an ordered list, make an ordered list. It's just generating the markdown necessary to render into you know that list versus this list. Okay. So both of those things are happening from a Google Sheet. So today was mostly supposed to be about sort of about your CV, but I think you know, people often have a formal CV that's like a PDF, but they also have a website maybe where some of that same content is over there. So I, I, that's the idea. It's just store your your raw stuff in a your your main content in a in a Google Sheet. Then you can render it to however you want. Um, Corto is what I use for all my courses now, my course websites and everything. Are but it's it's built on Distill. Distill is an R package, so it's less flexible than Corto, but. Corto was basically built on this. The, the team that made Corto was the same team that made Distill. You want to show the course website? Sure. So let's look at today's course that I'm about to go to after this. So this is a website um, for the class. Uh, you can see I have you know basic things like schedule. Here's what we're covering in class. Here's the syllabus, um, software you might need for the class. Um, <clears throat> and then you can have the source files. All right. So, so you go to the source files for it, and here you go. Each one of these are different QMD files. So like my, um, let's say my syllabus is just a bunch of markdown, right? Um, like here's here's stuff that's all in my syllabus. Participation, attendance, homework assignments, quizzes. Um, that's what it looks like. And when you're done, it renders to um, to this. So Distill and, and Quarto are very, very similar. And, um, but, um, but I don't use any sort of Google sheet for the website. The website content is all, most of this is somewhat static. Like it's not changing very often. <clears throat> There's a lot of stuff in the chat and I see a hand up too. So let's let some folks, uh, say something, Manny, you want to, I see your hand and I'll look at the chat too. Oh uh, yeah. We were just saying that, uh, email that went out yesterday said noon. So I think a lot of us were confused uh, about, Oh shoot. Yeah. Yeah, so Have are we starting perfect. earlier now, like 11.30 or something? This would be why. Yes, we moved oh. it up to 11.30 to 12.30. I leave for class at 12. Got uh, you. Okay, cool. So, so I know for the future then. Um, so I, yeah. I just want to know the make ordered list function. I just got a glimpse at your code. Where did oh, you, sure. did you, did that? did you build that function? Yeah, Where's mostly, but it's mostly one idea. So if there's a pander <laughs> package, which is for using pandoc. So we're going to get a little deeper now. Like what's going on when Corto renders something is Corto calls on this tool called Pandoc, which is another open source magical thing that that exists. I mean, so the people who put their effort into this are just incredible. This is a, what it says, universal document converter. It like you give it like Markdown or any of these other sort of markup scripts and you can render it into just about anything you can ever want. Um, so that's what, that's what Pandoc does. And so when you say, when you click this little render button here, what it's going to do is it's going to run through this script. It's going to run any code chunks it sees. So these code pieces are going to run, um, anything it gets back, it's going to say, okay, take that, stick it in place of that code chunk and then pass it on to LaTeX and LaTeX is going to say, okay, let's make a PDF out of this thing. So there's a function in here called pandoc.list. That just says when you give it like a vector of something, you give it like a bunch of numbers, it'll make a a, a bunch of items. Uh, I think there's a thing called fruit in R, right? Fruit? Yeah, there's like a bunch of fruit. And so you can say pandoc.list and like of anything. So give it that fruit list. And it makes markdown. See, this is just markdown code of a bulleted list. So now if you stuck that in your, it, it would render... Like, actually, let's just do this for fun. Like, let's just completely destroy my CV for a second. Um, hang on. Wait, I can't see it because this is in the way. That's why. Here, let's take this and let's just render like a ton of fruit into my CV for no reason. I'm going to put it at the top so we can 
we can break things. And sorry, um, so here you can write whatever code. So if you wanted to write Python, you can write Python. And if you want yep. to write R, oh, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, like, so okay. any code chunk. So this is an R chunk. But if you want it to be Python, you just say Python. Oh, OK. And you, and now you can okay. write Python code here. As long okay. as it knows that that is installed on your machine, you can you can use it. I use R more, so I'm more familiar with it. But you can insert a little okay. chunk, and the default one is R. But you can also change that. I think you can settings. There's all sorts of different things. But okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if I put that list, so here, it, it's a bit like Visual Studio Code. It's like the equivalent. No. Uh, okay. Visual Studio Code is like the IDE. That's like the editor. This is R Studio, which is a editor for R. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but you could run this. You can run Corto in. Um, you can run it in Visual VS Code. Yeah. So if you're okay. a VS Code person and you use Python, just so you can do that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, it has it has a similar flavor where like in Jupyter Notebooks you're writing Markdown and you're writing code and you're rendering it to things. Um, this just renders to static outputs like websites or PDFs. Uh -huh. So it doesn't have to be, uh, it's just a plain text file. It doesn't have to have like an, a kernel and be in a web browser. So you can edit these through any editor you want. You can also just edit it. Just I use Sublime Text, which is a plain text editor if you want to just edit it here. It's just plain text. So um, so that's my favorite thing about it over Jupyter is all I have to do is write plain text and I can render to anything. Whereas Jupyter, I have to have like a browser up and a kernel and some things like that. There's none of that machinery like needed. So you'll see that like, I just say, I just said render this, <laughs> like this fruit vector, which is just a bunch of fruits. Um, I say pandoc.list and, and okay, it makes it a bullet list. I can say um, ordered and it'll make a numbered list. See numbers now, but it didn't render right. Like what's going on here? This is actually just rendering the R output, which is what you see here. If you want it to render and actually render as Markdown, you have to say results as is. So so don't it's it's telling Pandoc like hey don't 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 display this as an R code. Like actually inject it into the the Markdown. So now when I render it, it'll it'll like not look like R code here. It'll look like <clears throat> a numbered list. Um, let's see if it does it right. But up, but up. There we go. See, numbered list. And there you go. You're compiling via the R Studio and then you commit. Yeah, what, what happens when you hit render, it it has nothing to do with R. It actually runs a terminal command. Like it's it's a quart quarto is a separate language. It's nothing to do with R. Um so you can say quarto render. And it we will so you can run it from command line. Um, if you're in VS Code, that's how you'd probably do it. R Studio, I mean, Cordo is developed by Posit, which used to be called R Studio. So it's all kind of grown out. All of this has grown out of the R ecosystem, um, and that's why I still use R Studio because it's really nice. It has a lot of these little buttons and things. Like it's just a good editor for working with this. But if you are, if you've never used R and you're like 100% a Python person. Just use VS Code and Google around for like the VS Code Quarto plugins. There's some really nice plugins that basically get you the same kind of functionality. I think there's like a PDF, you know, viewer and some other things like that. VS Code is is just incredibly flexible, so you can. can compare Quarto to Jupyter uh, Um, like making books with it, well, or does... yes. So same same idea. I mean, I have a my book for my course, which is here, textbook. This is my textbook for my class, which is also just a Quarto doc. So you can render to like a gazillion outputs. Um, I really uh, like it. One of the other things that's particularly nice is presentations. Um, so like a, a Quarto presentation, I don't know if which of these might look good. Let's just pick one. Hopefully one of these looks reasonable. Is like a slide like this. And you can have like code and stuff in there and all, all of this is also just a plain markdown so i'm really highlighting quarto now than anything this has become a like what is quarto session but that's fine um so yeah really nice you don't have to use powerpoint anymore you can just like make a interactive um you know uh slide deck that's built on a plain text file which by the way all of my stuff on my my site if you go to my courses like my students in my class will will see this. You know, we had class last week. Here you go. Here's some slides from class. Like this is all, yeah, this is just a Quarto slide deck, you know. So I can say view slides. It's live on the web. It's actually a website. 
Like it's actually just making a website, but it's just controlling what you're seeing. Local, huh? huh? So uh, Quarto website just has its own local server up that you can just simply share? No, this is just static. This is just a static, all of this yeah. is in GitHub pages. Yeah, These so. GitHub pages, right? When you compile yeah. the site, does it go to a separate folder, like the docs folder or something? Yeah, you can control that. Um, let's let's look at like the code for one of my my sites. Um, define what the site. Hmm. Like, could you show us if you want to modify like the date? Sure. Let's let's look at like class last week. So here's class last week. Here's what that class looks like. Um, some boilerplate stuff. But um, this was the slide that said like, "Hi, this is me." Like this slide that has a picture of me and some stuff about me, this is just Markdown. So I, I have, there's some things that I, that you can use to like change the positioning of things. So this is like a little, you just put things in this bracket to say, be on the left side, be on the right side. So the left side is an image where I actually just wrote HTML because it was easy. Um, and the right side is just a bullet list and, and it renders to that. Um, same with my students and other things in here. So this is, all stuff like that. Later on in the class, we get into like where I'm, you know, talking about some stuff. We have code rendering. You know, we have like, hey, look at this code. Like, this is this is how you overwrite an object in R, and that's like down here too. It's just I just wrote an R chunk, and it just renders. Um, so all I do in my whole life is just edit Markdown. Like I, I feel like I like. 80% of my hours are just writing Markdown and then rendering it to different things like websites or PDFs or slide decks. And every talk I ever give, I have a subdomain for my website called slides. So every talk I give, every time I give a talk, I don't have to deal with like the USB stick. I just go to the site and say, this was the talk I just gave. Click on that. There's my slides. They're just live. Um, there it's a website. So I really like this platform because of its ability to, it generates things that are static. It generates a one like set of HTML files that is essentially a website. So you can upload them anywhere. And there's a lot of tools. I, I host them all on GitHub, right? So all the source code is there and all the rendered things are there. And then you can use like Netlify to like make it live for no cost. So um, I'm seeing more, more questions here. Um, what happened to my thing? Manny has his hand up again. There's more stuff happening in the chat. Oh, most of the chat is is talking about our massive failure of saying like noon, oh, and everyone yeah. everyone is like, "Yes, this is the email I got. This is totally wrong." Yeah, that's our yeah, fault. That's my fault. We we have we, we have to update this. this um, so, uh, my question was, uh, you know, there's a couple of packages out there for uh, building CVs. Like mm -hmm. what? There's one by Mitchell O'Hara Wild, and um, yeah, I've seen a few. His name at uh, in us from Australia. The forecasting guys, they built one. And you can just take your uh, bibliography, your .bib file, and, you know, use that to generate the CV. Yeah. And I wonder what you think about the comparative ease of doing that versus building it this way in Quarto. Yeah. So to, to, <clears throat> I thought about this idea. I also thought about, like, why not just go to Scholar <clears throat> and just grab my own content and just, like, basically scrape this and drop it in? Like, why not just do that? A couple of different reasons. Um for one, I want to render it to two different outputs. You know, I want to have a CV that's a PDF, but I also want to render this stuff to my website. And what I need for this, some of the pieces for this are going to be a little bit different than what I need for that. Um, if I have a .bib file, it's a lot harder to work with it in, in this context. I have never really had as much like luck getting it all to kind of sync up nicely. Um, and you'll also see there's a lot of other things that I like to highlight, especially on the, the website version as opposed to the PDF. So like, so for like this one, for example, code and data, I have a link to that. I have a link to my, the research gate page on that. I like to be like as transparent as I can. Um, and I also made a whole separate little page that says like details. Like if you want to see more about this one, you can click on that. And it tells you a little bit more about the, it's like a, like a key figure, um, the whole abstract, and it gives you an, a suggested citation, um, which, um, so by, by kind of working with a, a Google sheet, I can just define whatever I want. Like if, if, if I start here, I'm not limited by like whatever is technically in the bib file. And, um, you know, I'm not updating this too often. So it was easy enough for me to like, just like set it up once. And then from there on, every time I, something needs to be updated, I just manually update this one thing. And, and I, you know, I do have the bib in here. <laughs> so it's like even, 
completely overkill, but I have the full biblio big text only for that purpose of giving that to somebody if they wanted it. Um, so the I, I the other thing I wanted to ask you about is like the Quarto folks are really pushing the templates and extensions. Sure. So have you, is there, would be there, would there be a way to like, yeah, you could, you could, um, you could standardize this a little bit where like, if you kind of standardize your spreadsheet where like the names are all, you know, exactly the way, a, a particular way, you can imagine a, a standardized thing that says, use this template with a Google doc that has these, this header and it will, it'll generate all that for you. Um, I, I thought about it, but you know, when I look at my CV, there's a lot of things on here that are pretty distinct to me, like a whole list of fruit for some reason, but you know, um, nice. like I wanted to put in my ORC ID and my Google scholar. I, I also wanted to highlight whether one of the authors was one of my students. And so like, there's a little asterisk there, little tiny things like that, that I just, you know, so it became, this is a, this is your public facing thing to the world. Um, there's categories that may not work for a bunch of people. So I call, I mean, so, so I wanted the flexibility of, of, of kind of doing that. I also have other things that are pretty unique, like teaching, not everyone's a teaching, but like I, I teach and I wanted a nice summary table of like, what courses have I taught? How many people were took it? And what was my sort of overall faculty evaluations and stuff. So I, I made this for myself and for me to turn this into a, a, a template. There, there's there's probably a hundred different decisions that you would make and it would like each one of those decisions would eliminate another person from using it properly. Like they or they would have to, the final version of it would be probably in a form that I wouldn't be happy with. And so I didn't want to do it. I'd rather just make that available and then you can copy this repo and like make it yourself. I don't think it's too complicated. If you know enough about Quarto and you've played with it enough, you can look at my source code and see that I've only written a handful of little functions, like 70 lines here, like just a few things that just little helper, helper tools. And you spend an hour with it. I think you could get it working yourself. Um, I didn't even go into details about like, I use a custom font on here called Railway. That's an open font on, on Google. Um, I, I have that here. There's the actual fonts. So if you want to use a particular font, um, I also have some Chinese text in here. So I had to put a Chinese font in here. Um, so there is, there is like a lot of things in here that were just very unique and, and this is the final product. So I would, I would recommend just playing around with the, the source code if you want to, if you want to try it. The other thing I'm wondering too is completely separate from CV, but since you can web scrape into Google Sheets with a function. Yeah. You could, in theory, scrape places, bring it together, reproduce it, and put it onto a live website. Yes. Like if you wanted your own <laughs> headlines just to think you're interested in, and you wanted to put that onto a website so you didn't have to go look for it. Yeah. And you could do anything, anything you can pull. The, ma the machinery to put all this together is just really wonderful now. Um, and it, a lot of it's pretty recent. Quarto's relatively recent. I mean, a few years maybe. It used to be a grab bag of different R packages. And now it lives outside of R as Quarto. So you can use Python and other things with it. Um, GitHub Actions is like a key thing here for automating these things and having triggers that that trigger and then everything re-renders. So um, just pulling all those pieces together it takes some time to play around with it, but I will tell you that like not not a single thing I just talked about someone told me how to do. Like it was just me just goofing around until I figured it out, and then ChatGPT coming along and like really accelerating the the speed to success. Uh, a lot of the details, like like this whole function, for example, that you asked about earlier, like how do you make this pandoc list? I had no, I've never thought about doing this, and I was like, huh, how do you do that? Chat GPT, and it was like, oh, there's a package, and you can use this function called pandoc list. And done. It was it was just incredible how fast I solved that. And then I rendered it the first time, and I didn't have I didn't have that uh, that little as is thing in here, and so it looked horrible. And I was like, why does this look so bad? And I was like, ah, oh, you should probably use as is. I'm like, oh, well, there you go. Like it's just you just ask the AI until until you get to where you want to go. Um, so hopefully for the students in my class, you can see why it's like valuable to understand the underlying language, right? Like if you know the language well, then you can do kind of anything because you know how to ask tools like ChatGPT. You know what to ask and you know you know where you're going. If you don't know the basics of a language, then get those down and then you can go off and do whatever you want. Like 
all of these pieces are just things that I learned um, because I already knew enough about R, I could work in R and get it done. But you could do the exact same thing in Python. Uh, I probably should go to class. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the share. Uh, but for Thanks, those who everyone. joined late, you'll see my error in my email message. Apologies. Well um, yes, we have more pizza for people yeah, who joined late. Um, here. There are a couple of upcoming sessions that might be of interest at the libraries. Um, so coming up, there's going to be teach yourself to code with.